name is Lindsay Wyrick and this is a Royal and Lang Nickel Art Instructor video. In this video we are going to explore drawing and we're going to use colored pencils as well as colored pencil blocks. It's a lot of fun and I think that you'll really enjoy drawing with color. We're going to start off with this maple leaf which is wonderful because I see these all over the place growing up in Maine and uh, this fall the ground is just covered with them. So if you live somewhere where the leaves change color you can go out and grab a few from your lawn and uh, use them as reference and that's always the best way to do it. I'm going to show you how to layer colors in colored pencils so you can keep bringing up colors gradually and not saturating the paper. That allows you to keep layering and layering until you get just the look you want. After we're done our maple leaf we're going to move on to some glass bottles and in this lesson I'm going to show you how to burnish. Basically that means coloring really thickly with your colored pencils so you lay down a lot of color. I'm going to share some tips and tricks for fixing mistakes. I'm also going to show you what all of these little tools that you get in your art instructor kit are used for. And I'm going to share some ways to uh, make the coloring process a little easier on your hands if you do suffer from arthritis or other joint problems because techniques like burnishing can, um, it can give you some trouble if you have any strength issues. So it's nice to know the other techniques you can use with your media so that they don't go to waste, such as building up with layers. So if you are ready to explore drawing with colored pencils, let's go to the table and get started. Let's take a look at the supplies that come in your drawing kit. We have a variety of colored pencils and you've probably used colored pencils before. You've got 12 standard colors and these are your go-to colors, the ones you're going to use the most often. And then you have four fluorescent colors and these are great to add a little pop to a uh, in illustrations but they are best used in sketchbooks since fluorescent colors no matter who they're by tend to fade uh, more readily than a regular color. So just kind of keep that in mind and use them in your sketchbooks. There's also a gold gold and silver pencil which look really great on colored paper such as black cardstock. There's also colored pencil bars. So it's the same pigment that you would find in the pencil, but they're in a bar form. And let me show you the difference between um, working with the uh, the bar versus the pencil. So the bars are great for when you want to add in a lot of color. You can see you can quickly color an area, but you can also work on the edge and get a nice fine line as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now if you want to sharpen this so you get an edge back so you can get those fine lines, you want to use this guy over here. This is a sandpaper stump and it comes with a little like protective cover on there and then you can you can sharpen it just by dragging your pencil or your color pencil block across that. Now I also wanted to show you really quickly the line from the pencil. You can sharpen these to a nice fine point. Um, I feel like these might even be a little more pigmented but from, than the sticks, but um, either way they both give you a lot of color and we'll be using both of these in our projects today. Another thing that's in this kit is a blending stump and this is handy for when you need to push a couple colors together or you just want to smooth out the effect of coloring an area one solid color. This can be cleaned by simply wiping across the uh, sandpaper block when you want to change colors. It's very, very handy. And then when this block gets dirty, you just peel off that top sheet and you have a fresh piece of sandpaper underneath. So it's really handy. You also have a pencil sharpener. You'll want this for sharpening your colored pencils and I recommend you keep a little dish handy that you can sharpen into so you don't make a mess on your table. And of course a regular uh, kneadable eraser. So this is a little different than the um, than the hard plastic erasers you're probably used to. This is kind of like a putty and to clean it you simply, um, you simply knead it back and forth like a piece of clay. It's really handy. Now to erase with this, you don't rub back and forth like you would with a regular eraser. Instead you just want to press down on your surface until you've lightened it up enough. And you can see how I lighten the center of that colored pencil area. So this is really handy for lightening, highlighting, and removing pencil where you don't want it. So without further ado, let's get to our first lesson. Our first subject is a maple leaf. I think they're so pretty in the fall. This one's dried out a little bit, but it's going to be a wonderful um, example for us to go by. You could always just trace a leaf if you want to, or you can draw it freehand, which is what we're going to do today. But if you want to go in your yard and find a leaf to trace, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to start by getting the um, kind of the vein structure here. So my first line will represent from the stem to the tip of the leaf. Now our, um, the kind of the bottom of the leaf part itself starts right there. 
and I am going to draw out my veins for the two main peaks of the maple leaf. Then I am going to come over here and get a line for this vein and one for this one over here and that's just going to help me space everything out. Now I apologize for drawing that so lightly but I didn't want to make really dark marks on here and in fact I recommend that you sketch this out with um, with a, a yellow pencil even. But I am going to go in with a um, with a firmer firmer line here as um, as I draw my contour. Since I have the leaf vein lines, the main veins, the main veins in, um, it's pretty easy for me to go through and then sketch this part. And we can adjust things a little bit as we go. I just want to get the basic kind of uh, the shape down first. And if you don't have any leaves around but you don't feel like drawing, you could obviously find a photo to print from the internet that you could trace. They have kind of a rough pinked edge, so you just want to make sure you get that in there. And that's pretty much it. And the rest is coloring, so yay for easy drawing, right? So we're going to go in with our sticks. And I'm going to start with a yellow because there is a lot of yellow here and also I can go green over yellow when it's going to look good and I can do red over yellow when it's going to look good. So this is a great way for me to layer in some color. You don't want to press really hard though. You don't want to like clog the tooth of your paper because then it will be difficult for other colors to sit on top. So basically what you want to do is just kind of lay down a rough, um, a rough base coat of this of this yellow stick. I think that the sticks are a little bit drier than the pencil, so that's actually kind of helpful. You don't want this bottom layer to be super waxy. That's why I say don't go down really strong with the um, with your first layer here because other, if, if you clog the tooth, if you put it down really thick and waxy, nothing's going to stick on top of it. If that doesn't make sense, I think as soon as you <laughs> complete your first drawing you'll understand what I mean. Now you can actually pretty much color the whole thing in but as I get to areas that are going to be more red I am really uh, laying up on the pressure so I'm just kind of putting a little bit of color there but I, d I don't want to coat all that paper. Okay so we've got a base of the yellow and I might go back in with this on top in fact I like to take the colors out as I've used them and, and lay them on my work surface so I know what colors to go back to. So I'm going to grab some of this light green and I am going to add a little bit of that on top down here where I see the green. Now when I picked this leaf I sketched it when it was fresh and new and um, and so I know how vibrant the colors were originally so I am going to make them a little bit brighter than they look uh, in that dried leaf there. But I did want to save that leaf before the snow came so I would have it to go by. Now something you'll know, you'll notice that if you have anything under your your paper, when you're doing this technique, it will pick up the texture of that. So you'll want to make sure you have a very smooth table to work on so you don't have any issues there. The next color we're going to add is orange and we're going to use the stick again. We are going to stay nice and and bold and cover as much ground as we can. That's how you um, you can really build up a picture quickly in colored pencil. I really like having the use of these um, these sticks in the artwork. Now remember, no clogging the tooth, no pressing really hard. We're just kind of uh, we're just kind of like blushing on some color, just kind of like uh, just kind of really softly shading and rouging. This is uh, this is to just get some color down. Now if you have the opportunity, it's a lot of fun to work on a toned surface. In fact, let me show you what this leaf looks like on toned tan using these exact same pencils. Isn't that pretty? I really enjoyed sketching this on a toned sketch pad. So if you get a chance to do that, give it a try. You can also use watercolor to color your sketchbook paper before you do your uh, colored pencil drawing for the same effect. It's just, I think it, it just adds so much. Now for the red we can add some of this color but we do want to reserve um, 
a lot of that for the pencil. For one thing, it's really difficult to control those edges. And for another thing, we're going to want to start to really add some pigment and use a little force when we color when we're going after those dark reds. So I just want to make sure that we don't um, that we don't clog that tooth and make it more difficult for pigment to stick. I also feel like that the um, the color pencil sticks better on top of the bars than vice versa. So that's why I like to go in first with the bars. I reckon they're probably about the same material. I mean, they probably are exactly the same material, but the fact that we're using it not on a sharp point, but rather on this uh, broad side with a little pressure, it's just not putting as much down. So once you've got everything um, fairly covered, not really colored in as darkly as you want, but just covered, then we'll be able to skip over to the pencil. Now we're going to move into using the pencils, and uh, this is where you want to start building up your color. And I'm going in with uh, my red colored pencil, and uh, we're only using 12 colors here. Um, actually, we're not even going to use all of the 12 colors, so we're going to need to um, make sure we pay attention to layering and blending so that we can mix and get all the colors that we need. I think when you're starting out, working with a limited palette really helps you um, learn the properties of the few supplies you have and then as you build on that you get to add versatility to your kit. Now you can see just by um, all that work that we did just by adding that kind of darker edge it's really um, making it come to life. I'm really trying to keep my hand out of the way uh, so you can see what I'm doing so I might I might move it a couple times kind of kind of scooch it up um, so that hopefully you can see a little bit better. Uh, I am using small circular strokes and when I go to the edge I'm pressing more and then as I pull back into the body of the leaf I'm using much less pressure so it kind of goes in seamlessly. If you feel that you have a white knuckle grip on your pencils and you don't know how to loosen up, hold the pencil further back. The further back you hold the pencil, the less pressure you're going to be putting on the lead. So if you find yourself breaking lead constantly and getting lines that have just kind of like dug into the paper, it's probably just because your, your grip is a little too tight on it and you just need to, um, need to loosen it up a little bit. With these... Uh, pointed um, pencils all you got to do is you can uh, trace your edge get those little peaks in there get those serrated edges of the leaf so it has that realistic look and just keep on keeping on with those small rounded strokes and just li lift up on the pressure as you come back now something else I wanted to mention because I have a lot of students that suffer from arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis and other um, strength issues, colored pencils can be difficult for, uh, for folks that have any pain in their wrists carpal tunnel or um, arthritis. So if you have those issues, color pencil might not be the topic or the, uh, the supply for you rather. But um, if you work on a layering method like we did with the bars, going in with the bars first and then going in with the pencil after on the areas you need the darkest, it is a lot less fatiguing on your hands. So if you've tried them in the past and and you've had issues with it, just uh, just you could try those techniques. You might not get the really dark, dark burnished results that you see some other color pencil artists getting, but you can at least enjoy the medium and uh, and of course you can always use colored pencils in combination with other materials even if you're not using them for the uh, majority of your artwork so uh, so just kind of keep that in mind I do know some people have give, that gave away their colored pencils because they were so frustrated with how sore their hands would be afterwards so I'm making um, a conscious effort to not press so hard while I work on this so anyone with those sorts of um, mobility issues won't have problems with our tutorial today and a set like this is inexpensive enough, so if you're not sure if you'd like it, it's a great it's a great one to try out. It's you know it, you're not, it's not going to set you back that much, and uh, and you still get the joy of of trying out a new medium, as with all the uh, art instructor sets. So again, I'm defining those edges, and then oh another thing, if you like to have a nice uh, 
sharp point on your pencil as you're coloring if you rotate your pencil just kind of give it a turn that will uh, and you're working slightly on the edge while you do your circles or ovals little circles remember that I said that you do uh, <laughs> it's hard to talk and color at the same time um, then you'll end up making a nice point on your pencil which will be really handy when we go to do our veining in a little bit so I'm just going to do a little bit of red here and uh, that's about it for this particular technique with this color. With the same sharpened pencil, because remember we, we curved it, we turned it as we went, so we ended up with a nice sharp point. We're going to add our veins and our stem. First, the veins. So remember we sketched those on with that yellow, um, uh, not yellow, orange pencil at the beginning and it was super, super light because we just wanted to kind of get an idea of where things are going to be. Well, now we're going in with the red and we're starting pressing firmly near the stem and as it comes out we're going to go lighter and that because usually your veins look a lot lighter as they get away from the stem and as they come off of the the main stem they get lighter they kind of taper off as they go and that gives us a nice natural look the reason we do it now as opposed to when we first um drew the leaf is because we've got some value established so it's going to be easier to get it right the first time. It really wastes quite a bit of time when you have to go in and keep readjusting. So if you get it right the first time then uh, it just it it's more pleasurable to draw that draw that way I think. Now you can have some little bitty kind of like uh, hairy hairy veins I don't know what to call them <laughs> little hairy bits coming off like that um, I would just try to keep it fairly fairly light so we've got our veining in there and it looks nice and natural and of course I'm keeping my coloring a little bit more like the sketch I did here when this leaf was fresh uh, just because I think it's it looks a little nicer but this is also it's nice to have that reference to look back I'm, I'm looking at both things as I go just just so you know and I want to get a little bit brighter with my green I've got two pretty shades of green here and I'm going to start it with my lighter. I'd like to go lighter and then work darker so I can kind of build my layers that way. Uh, so I'm starting in, I'm doing circles. This is not putting down a ton of pigment because it is such a light color. Uh, and I can go a little quicker. I'm just doing kind of bigger circles and going quicker, but I am holding uh, towards the back of the pencil so I'm not getting too much pressure. I think sometimes you can end up spending a lot of time uh, because you're cautious, overly cautious about uh, how much to put down, but I think just, you know, practice. The more practice you get, uh, the more proficient you're going to get in the media, the quicker you're going to get in the media, and the more enjoyment you're going to have out of it. Because, I mean, there's definitely, you definitely want to take your time on your art, but sometimes you're just, you're not being productive, you're just doing kind of busy work. Switching to the darker green now, and, um, and I think sometimes we get stuck in that kind of, it's almost like we're procrastinating, uh, creating, you know, creating our artwork. We, it's so fun to be in the middle of a picture and to be finishing up a picture. So I think sometimes we want to like kind of stay in that middle, um, working on a, a, a painting or a drawing time a little bit longer. And it, it does not make <laughs> for the most productive artwork sometimes. But as long as you're having fun, who cares, right? As long as you are enjoying the process, that's what matters. Now I'm just getting a little uh, too wild and woolly there, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So you don't want to make your circles too big, or you're going to have kind of a scribbly look to it, like I got right there. You can, I'm going to bring that up a little closer so you can see. Look how scribbly that looks right there. That's not what you want to do. You want something that's a little bit smoother. So uh, if that happens, just kind of go over it. Do ovals in the opposite direction of where how you colored before and that will help take down that uh, that scribbliness. I kind of get excited when I'm coloring it's like oh I want to see all the colors I want to I want to see them build up you know and then I go a little a little haywire on my coloring so now I've gone in with a yellow and I can overlap the reds the oranges and the greens with this so this is a really wonderful color for when you want to bring up the intensity and you want something that's going to intensify all of the colors and not make mud so that's a great use of this yellow and I'm just working on regular old drawing paper um, I like drawing paper versus a like a copy paper or inkjet printer paper because it has a little bit of tooth to it 
your copy paper is meant to be smooth, like really smooth, because that's what gives you the best um, printouts with ink from your computer, your computer printer, right? So when you're when you're sketching with a dry media such as pencil, such as colored pencil, such as charcoal, you want something that's got a little grab to it. You want it to um, to grab some of that media and pull it off of the pencil and lock it onto the paper. So that's why a drawing paper is a little bit better. That said, use whatever you can get your hands on because all practice is good practice when it comes to uh, sketching and drawing. Now with a lighter color like this, I can go a little um, a little wilder with my circles I, because if I'm a little off or my circles are a little big, they're not really going to show up. But it's when you do it with those darker colors, it really becomes apparent that you've been a little lazy with your coloring. I'm going to go back to the red because I feel like maybe we'll try one of those neon colors. Let's see how that looks. Um, because I feel like I want to I want to kick up the color a little bit. Maybe I'll, when you want to work on the edge of your uh, pencil, kind of like a bar, you can hold it down a little closer to the end and then you're just using that whole flat side of the lead. I don't think this really gives it a lot of intensity. This gives it um, more of a fluorescent tone, but it's not really adding to the intensity value of the uh, the sketch. Okay, now we're going to grab um, a purple because we want to get these richer tones at the tips of the leaf points here. And because it's a dark color, you do want to um, just watch your pressure and do careful little circles. And I, uh, you might want to hold the pencil a little closer to the... Um, uh, to the point just so you have a little bit better control. I'm not doing that mo mainly because I want to make sure my hand's not covering up the uh, the area that I'm trying to color. That's a little, um, it can be a little tricky when you're filming a tutorial to just kind of keep your hand out of the way. So that's what I'm trying to do. But look at how dark we can get that color with this. Isn't this gorgeous? So I think a lot of times people think, well, I'm, I'm not even going to bother doing color pencil art unless I can go spend $100 on a set of you know artist pencils, um, you totally can. You, these are inexpensive pencil, inexpensive pencils, but you can still get a beautiful, uh, a beautiful result with a small handful of colors. So, so keep that in mind. And there are uh, larger packages of these pencils available from Royal and Magnical. If you absolutely love doing colored pencil art, you can get a larger package and it won't break the bank. So keep that in mind if you, um, if you want to have a few more colors in your stash. But I think it's really important to learn how to use what you have, learn how to work with a limited palette because it's only going to benefit you down the road. And if you can learn how to mix colored pencils, you are going to be so far ahead of the game because that's trickier. That's trickier than mixing like um, watercolors or oils or acrylic paints when, you know, they're wet. You mix them together really easy. You have to layer with colored pencils and you have to be really mindful about everything that you're putting down and how it's going to react with the things, the colors that you put over it. And the best way to learn that is not by watching tutorials. It's by picking up your pencils and having a go. And, uh, and, and it's a lot of fun, too. So there. I really like that little addition. But I feel like I want to glaze over with some more red because I want to bring out uh, a richer color there. And now here is where we get into the, uh, the point that I was making earlier about not filling the tooth of the paper with your first layers because if I had gone in really thickly with the um, with the color pencil bars then I wouldn't be able to layer at this point and I would just be um, very limited to what I what I already put down there and if the color wasn't right or rich enough then I wouldn't be able to add to it and it would be a bummer so you want to save that um, that burnishing or that coloring firmly to the end so right now we're, we're just about wrapping up on this on this um, project, I can go in and I can use a little bit more pressure and I can really fill the tooth and really get that color down there. You just want to build up that color using a little more pressure than you were before going in with your little circles and you're layering and layering and building up the richness of color and this is a really great skill to have because you're doing this all with just a few shades of color pencil we haven't used that many and you're getting a really nice variety of color here For the stem, you want to go ahead and color that fairly firmly with your red. 
and you can bring that stem right up into the middle of your uh, your leaf just kind of lift up on the pressure as you start to bring it into the veins and that gives you a nice um, uh, a nice realistic look and then I am going to go in with some green and add a little bit of that to some of the stem and it gives a nice shadow as it overlaps the red now for a little bit of brown I think we'll use some of this for detailing and for shadowing I'm going to start just by kind of bringing it into my veins a little bit there and then we're going to use it to make our cast shadow so I'm going to start just by kind of outlining one edge of the stem and then I am going to make a shadow kind of coming off of well let's see how our shadow looks if I I don't get a very dramatic shadow here because I have so many lights pointing at my workspace but if we look here at my sketch um, that I did with a more dramatic lighted angle you can see how I got this cast shadow kind of to the left and that's the kind of shadow we're going to do on this project I'm gonna start by sketching my shadow really really lightly with my pencil I am using the brown that's the closest to the, sh the shadow color I am op I am like trying to achieve so I'm going to start with that and then I am going to bring it around the side and I can outline and define the edge of my leaf as well so it, it lets you get those crisper lines back if you lost them and so I'm just using after I get that first line drawn I am using uh, kind of my small circles again you want the shadow darkest right next to the leaf and then getting lighter as it fades off because um, as the light can peek under there it diffuses the shadow so that's why it gets a little bit lighter away from the body of the leaf we will be adding another color in there you can either use like a navy blue or a black and that will um, that will help give us that crisper shadow and deepen it up as we go so I think I'm going to actually bring this out here a little bit. And I think I'm actually going to draw my contour so I don't get confused as I'm working. That's going to be the contour for that. I'm going to walk up here. And there's going to be just a tiny one up there and just a smidgen over here so what I like to do again I like to trace the edge of the leaf and then I like to pull that shadow out from there starting darker next to the leaf and lightening up as I come out and you'll want to do that for each of the uh, shadow sections that we have try to not have any lines showing just try to keep it uh, light and even by doing your your uh, overlapping ovals make sure you do pull in a little bit of that uh, pointed detail as you go around and add the shadow because it will um, it is close enough to the surface where you would get that kind of pointed uh, pointed look to the shadow so if I can I don't know if you can see that very well if I kind of tip that a little bit you do want to have the shape of the leaf there so I think I actually want to try doing the shadow with a dark blue the darkest blue here is uh, this pencil I want to see how that's gonna look because that might be dark enough and blue is the opposite of orange so it might actually make our leaf seem a little bit brighter if I need to add some black on top of it that's fine but I think I want to start with this and just see what I can get as far as a uh, colorful shadow and we could even add the blue in areas on the leaf if we want to uh, to help kind of harmonize those colors but that see how that darkens it up quite a bit that versus what we have over here it's all about experimenting and if you learn your color theory and your color wheel and you look at what colors are opposite on the color wheel you can often blend those colors overlap them to neutralize them and it just gives you a lot more versatility with fewer supplies and uh, that's good for your budget and it's good for your storage at home because you don't have to have so many things 
around. Or if you like to travel with your art supplies, you don't have to carry so many things with you. Now I like that, I think that looks pretty, but I still feel like I need something to give it that pop and I am gonna go in with black for that. So I am just gonna give, it's just gonna be kind of like a hint of, um, of color. I just really wanna get those edges, just like that. And I'm really only doing the black where it is closest to the object that's being shadowed because that's where your darker bits of shadow would be. You want to make sure that you're comfortable whenever you are making art. So turning your paper will really help. There's no point in um, in getting uncomfortable or getting a neck cramp or carpal tunnel or anything when you can avoid it. And plus it helps you look at your picture with, with fresh eyes when you can turn it and see it from another angle. So it's just good all around, a good good habit to get into. So remember, I'm just putting that black in really close to the um, to the leaf, kind of where the shadow is touching, and then just kind of blending it out. And that really is what we needed for that pop. And you can go and layer more if you feel like you need to, but um, I really like the way this came out, and I hope you give it a try. Uh, so we are going to go on and do another project in just a second. We are going to sketch some bottles and colored pencils, so let me get set up for that, and we will start that lesson. Glass bottles are a lot of fun to paint. They're colorful and cheerful, and they're wonderful for showing you how to do shadows and reflections. So the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of sketching and we're going to start with a red colored pencil. I'm going to start by sketching a circle in the center of my paper where I want the first bottle to be. Be really light with your lines until you're sure that you've got the shape that you want. And then I'm going to kind of divide that in half just so I can figure out where I want the top of the bottle to be. So I, I like to keep these lines really light, even though there's an eraser uh, that I can use on my colored pencils. Um, Somehow, if you press really hard, it can be difficult to get that that pigment off your paper. So just uh, kind of keep that in mind. You don't want to you want to keep it fairly light to begin with. And then I am going to go with a green colored pencil, and I am going to get the second bottle here in the back. Get the base of the bottle, which is kind of a tall cube, a tall, uh, kind of a tall box. And then again, I want a line coming up from the center of the mass of the shape. So I can have a spout or a neck to the bottle. And I am going to want kind of a little bit of a lip on the top of the bottle. And this one kind of has a little bit of a curve here. It's kind of fancy. You can get as fancy as you like. And this one has kind of some like, almost looks like three uh, bubbles on each side like that. So basic shapes again guys, we're just using you know circles and cubes. Now this other one, this one's a little bit um, different but it's not really tricky. I'm actually going to sketch it with pink because I want to keep it light. Let me darken this up a little bit, I want to make sure that you can see that. You want to go on the light side when you're sketching to make sure that you don't end up with um, with something that you can't erase. So here, to do this kind of a bubbly vase, I'm going to start by getting a line down the middle of it, and then I'm going to make a um, a line coming out, and then a line off the top. And what I'm going to do is make this kind of a triangle shape, kind of like that. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but that just gives you an idea. Then I am going to get the put the lip of the bottle in there first and get the neck in. Now after that, we're pretty much just drawing ovals all the way down. 
Okay, so go in and get those ovals and you've got those little guidelines to show you how far out to go. That's why we put those um, those lines coming out and we've got that line in the center just to make sure we're not getting too far off on either side. And your ovals get bigger as you go obviously because they're reaching out to the edge. And we're going to curve that on the bottom because it's obviously a cylindrical um, a cylindrical vase. All right, so we have our basic shapes down, so that's awesome. So now we need to put some, um, we need to reserve some highlights. So what I'm gonna do first is go in with my white pencil, or white block rather, and I am going to, um, I'm gonna use this to kind of act as a resist. So if I put this, uh, this pencil down in areas I know I want to highlight, that's going to protect the paper a little bit. So if I need to scrape it off or I need to erase it, there's going to be white pencil underneath and it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to do that. It's not going to be foolproof. I mean, I can layer on top of that, but I want to try to keep it pretty, um, pretty reserved. And so that's kind of filling the teeth and making, making it so I can't layer too much on there, basically. So now I'm going to use the um, the stick here in purple, and I'm going to start coloring in. I'm going to start coloring on this side because that's not the side I want the highlight on. And this is pretty much just to get my basic color down. Now I can go right over the um, the red vase because we will want to see a little bit of that color in there, and you can kind of see how it resisted the um, how it wanted to resist the pencil there, which is, or how it wanted to resist that purple color there, which is kind of what we're going for. Now I'm not going to purposely color on top of my highlight there, but even if I did, I mean it still wants to resist it, which is, which is really good. That's what I want it to do. I do like to use little circles when I do this because I don't want to leave scratches in the paper that could, you know, alter the work as we go forward. Okay, so this should look like, you know, a four-year-old colored it. It should look really messy and just really, really light. And we're just putting down that first layer of color. So I'm going to do the same thing for the green bottle with this green bar. It's the same color we sketched in, but because I am using it, you know, just really lightly on its, um, on the end there, it's just giving me kind of like a, uh, a wash of color. A base coat kind of. We do this to save us some time down the road. And I'm going to bring some of that color in the red vase. And we'll repeat that process with the red uh, stick here. Just fill in that shape. Okay, so we've got a really, really pale base coat down now, and now we can start building up our color. And I think I'm gonna start with the red vase because I think once we get the values down for this, everything else is gonna be a lot easier to, uh, to adjust. So for these strokes on the outside of the vase, I want them to be smooth and long. And I might go even go back into the stick in a little bit once I've got the uh, once I've got the the hang of how I want everything to uh, to be colored in. Once I get my values down, I want to add an ellipse here so I get I can kind of see down into the bottle a little bit. And I can shade underneath a little bit. 
and I'm actually going to turn my paper because I have an easier time doing the drawing and coloring the left sides of things so by turning my paper upside down I get to do two left sides instead of a right side I think it's because I'm right-handed if you're left-handed you probably found the find the opposite to be true so I'm going to color around that highlight and I pretty much want my uh, my coloring strokes if I am going to put a you know if I do want to show like a particular refraction of light I want my strokes to be going with the contours either that or I want to see no strokes so now I'm gonna go back to the stick because I've got this nice big area in the center and I can do my uh, I can do ovals overlapping ovals Now you do need to hold your finger kind of over the tip of the stick when you're doing this so you don't break the lead. If you do break it, it's not a big deal. I mean, you can still use it, but uh, it's a little easier if you have this a little bit longer, I think, for a lot of techniques because otherwise you don't have anything to hang on to. Okay, now if you did get a lot of pigment where you didn't want it on a highlight area, you can use the eraser to kind of clean it up a little bit. There we go. Maybe I can even add a little bit of highlight to the lip of the vase. Yeah, see it does, this does erase pretty well. I mean, I was really surprised at how well these colored pencils erase. But you still, I wouldn't go and, you know, try to clog the paper or anything. So now I think I want to go ahead in with some black and add some stronger accents and reflections and refractions. I'm doing this with the stick because um, it's kind of fun to use these. I'm going to go in... I don't feel like they're as strong as the pencils though. I feel like the pencils leave, maybe they're waxier and leave a little bit more, uh, leave a little bit more pigment behind. Like I'll go in and color that with the pencil. You see the pencil really will lay down on top of the sticks quite well. And it might be just because I can, I, I can handle it a little bit more ergonomically and put down a little more pressure. I think putting wiggly uh, dark lines like this really gives you that impression of the refraction of light. And then with the red pencil, you can intensify that color. So that's what I would do at this point. Just kind of go over it with this nice, uh, strong red. And then we'll work on to the next bottle. When you're burnishing or coloring really thickly like I am here, you don't have to stick to the little circles. You can... Um, color however it's most comfortable to you because you do need to put a lot of pressure down. This is the type of technique that if you have problems with your wrists, you have arthritis or other strength issues, this is the one that's going to be real rough for you. So um, uh, so I just want to put that out because I mean like my my hands are a little sore after coloring this and um, and I don't have arthritis so just you know be aware of that if you um, if you have any of those issues. And you can go in with the black and you can sharpen things up and add shadows as you go. And don't be afraid to move that paper around because that is going to kind of save your wrists a little bit as you're working through this, this lesson.
And of course, do what's comfortable for you. If, uh, if you're not comfortable doing that technique with the burnishing, then don't do it. Um, we're gonna do the same thing with the purple here. I am gonna start by refining my edges with the pencil. You can see the pencil is much bolder. Going with the contour of the glass, just like we did with the red. Now you can go over the red because we do want to see through that red a little bit, but you're going to notice because we're on a burnished background, that pencil is not going to stick very much. That's fine though, because we got that hint of the color back there. That's really all we need. But, uh, but that's why, that's why I say like when we were doing our leaf that you want to go slowly because you're not going to be able to go and put a lot on once you've burnished. Now the red is probably going to be, was probably the, the hardest one out of the bottles as far as like physically demanding to color because um, um, just to get that much red down for whatever reason, we need that color to be a little bit more intense than some of these others. So if that's, the worst is over, I guess, <laughs> is what I meant to say. Now I'm making sure I have the defining lines under each of these bubbles, kind of bubbles of glass. And we're not really looking into um, these bottles. They're a little more eye level. The red one's a little lower, so we can kind of see in the uh, center there. And then we can go ahead and color in here with the exception. Try to go around the areas that you um, that you colored in with the white pencil, those little highlights that you left. But other than that, you want to... Um, you want to really color this thickly with your purple pencil. So we're burnishing again and uh, you can either use circular strokes or you can use back and forth strokes. Because you're putting such a thick application down, it doesn't really matter. You're going to really be clogging the tooth. Just try to keep it pretty, pretty even. You don't want to, it doesn't, you don't want it to be streaky. Now that we've got a nice thick base coat of the uh, the purple, we can go in and add some refractions with our black. And those can go under the bubbles of the, um, the vase as well. Try to be pretty definite with your strokes. And you can make some really harsh harsh shadows kind of curving uh, over the contours of it as well like that the black does stand out on top of the um, the burnished color pencil which is really nice because if you do need that pop and you feel like you have lost most of your you know most of your tooth that black still has some power to um, to stick, which is really nice. Now the other thing you want to be um, aware of as you're uh, drawing and coloring with colored pencils and doing glass is that things around your um, your your objects will also leave some um, some reflections. So I want to get some red reflections on that vase. So what I'm going to do is go into my eraser here and I'm going to erase or try to erase a little bit on each side here. Now I should have colored this in before and, or reserved the white of the paper so that I would have some tooth there but I didn't so I am going to pull some up with that eraser and then I'm going to go in with my pencil and just throw some of that red in there because that vase would be reflecting a little bit. So another thing I kind of want to do, um, a lot of times I wait to the end to do this but um, I want to add a little bit of yellow into my highlights. So we have some nice warm, warm light coming in here. That's kind of nice, kind of nice to have. And then for the green, we're going to do the same thing. We are going to do a coating of, um, actually let's go into the darker green first so we don't cover up too much of our tooth and we're going to go in and start to define part of this bottle. I saved the easiest one for last. <laughs> I saved the, the one that's going to be a little bit uh, easier on our hands, I should say, for last. So I'm getting the contours here. 
I love that bottle green. You see sea glass sometimes in that color? It's so pretty. And again, I'm just going to scooch that up like that maybe. I just want to get my hands out of the way. That can be kind of tricky when I'm when you're doing um, coloring, especially if you're going to do any burnishing because you have to press quite a bit and you kind of have to hold the pencil pretty close to the tip. So I'm just going through and kind of defining some stuff here. I'll hold my pencil back as far as I can. Just try to go with the contours whenever you're coloring glass because that will that'll help you get that sharp uh, reflective glassy surface. And I want to pull some of that green in there. And then I'm going to grab um, some of the black again and I'm going to go put in my darkest shadows. The black is where you're going to put your darkest reflections. Those lines are going to be pretty um, crisp. Give a little lip to the bottom of this. And you can have a dark reflection or refraction just about anywhere. It's just how it's picking up the um, the elements around the object. We're also going to pull some of the other colors in from the other vase in here in a second before we clog it too much, before we get too much pencil in, I should say. But this is just a fun, a fun project here. Okay, so I'm going to grab some purple. I actually get that in because we will have some purple being reflected from, from that vase over there. So any edges that you think might be shining towards the purple. And we're going to do the same thing with our red. So I'll grab this red and I can put red on any of those surfaces that I think would reflex. This is where you can be real creative and have fun. And then for the rest of it, I am going to firmly burnish with this light green color. So I, you can go over the black, you can go over the green, don't go over the white, and don't go over red, and don't go over purple. You, want, you can go next to them because you want to keep those colors crisp. But that is pretty much what we have left for this step, and then we'll do shadows when we come back. So keep on burnishing and uh, just go over everything that's not purple, white, or red. After adding that really light green burnishing, I think that this needs a little bit more of the darker green color, so that's what I'm going in and adjusting. So never, you know, never just go by what I say and never, um, kind of never say never. If you are working on a picture and you realize that it needs something else, um, go ahead and do it. Don't, don't, you know, not do it just because you, you know, somebody, you know, you're following a tutorial and the instructor didn't do it. You might see that your picture actually needs a little bit of this or that. It's because we have different working styles. We might, one of us might have burnished burnished more, one of us might have put more um, of another color in it. So you've got to, you know, trust your instincts and add what you think your artwork needs. In fact, I'm going to grab a smidgen of blue for this because I feel like I want to make this color a little bit richer in some spots. Even though I haven't used blue anywhere else, my instinct tells me that a little bit of blue here will help make my green a little bit darker and give me the look that I am after. And we're just going for a kind of like a shiny shiny effect here. So for the shadows, when you have bottles and they are uh, they're casting shadows, they generally will um, they generally will throw some of the bottle color out because they're transparent. So light comes through. So not only does it leave a shadow, but it also leaves a um, it also leaves the color. It, it throws some of that color as well. So we have got light coming in from this side as you know, but we've got a couple other light sources. So we're just generally going to have kind of a localized shadow 
underneath. It kind of threw a little bit influenced so that it's more going that way. Glasses are so, glass objects are so shiny and reflective that you could have, you know, you could have several um, points of highlight. So that's what I'm doing for the green. I'm going to do the same for the red. And I'm using the bar, the color pencil bar, just because I know it's going to help me give a real subtle color. I won't get too, too uh, out of hand with it, basically. And it won't have little lines to worry about either. Just vary your pressure. You want hardly any pressure as you get out from the object. You want more pressure in next to the object. And we're going in with a purple here. So there we've got our color. And now with the black, what I would do is I would use the pencil and I would uh, shade right next to the object, right on the ground area. And you might want to sharpen your pencil if you don't have a decent point on there, just so that you can kind of um, kind of have that really sharp shadow right up against the um, the bottle, and then you can fade it out a little bit. I am someone who only sharpens when I absolutely need to, because I'm always just like, I don't know, I hate to waste my colored pencils, but I know I would have an easier time of it a lot of times if I just went ahead and sharpened the pencil. And if you want to do uh, more of a dark shadow, you can go in with the um, with the bar. In fact, my pencil is fairly blunt, so I'm just kind of feathering it out. But if yours is really sharp, then just go in with the bar. And that is the bottles. And um, or those are the bottles. I guess I should have some proper grammar for you today. <laughs> teach art, not English. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you have some bottles around your home you can set up on the windowsill and sketch and draw and color and paint and have a fun time with it because I think glass, marbles, bottles, things like that are very inspiring and a lot of fun to paint. I hope you enjoyed these tutorials today. I thought our leaf came out really pretty and I'm glad that I was able to share with you two different techniques that you can use with your colored pencil. One that's soft and gentle and built up in layers and one that's a little more forceful and aggressive. I think both of these techniques can be used together to create some really fantastic art. Thank you for watching this art instructor video. If you would like to find more free projects and tutorials, you can look me up online at lindsaywyrick.com or youtube.com slash thefrugalcrafter. Again, I'm Lindsay Wyrick for Royal and Langnickel, inspiring the artist in everyone.